بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters in the Chid Muslim community السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I pray you are all well we are still having to be in contact with, with each other online but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that soon the uh, uh, restrictions when the time is right will be lifted and we will be able to have the lecture in the mosque insha'Allah. First and foremost, I am so grateful to the committee of the masjid that they have given me this, this honor, this pleasure to be able to speak to you. And uh, specifically, I would like to thank Dr. Uthman, Jazallah Khair, and Ustad Abid for facilitating this talk for me, insha'Allah ta'ala. My observation, brothers and sisters, is that either uh, we do not know all about our Islamic history, or in the case of few, we know very little about our Islamic history. Stating this fact, as painful as it might be, is useful because we need to know our own position, our own status. Once we know our limitations, our uh, setbacks, we can improve. I will ask a few key questions and I will pause to give you time while you are where you are in your homes to try to answer and I will give the answers. I do this so that we together realize that we know little about our Islamic history and that we ought to learn and know more about our tarikh, about our Islamic identity, about our history. What is the current history year, please, may I ask? 1,442. What is the current Islamic month in our current Hijri year? We have just started the month of Safar, which is month number two. What is the period of time that our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent as a prophet? What was the duration of his prophecy, 23 years. How many years of that did he spend in Mecca? 13. How many, therefore, did he spend in Medina? 10 years, right? After the Prophet وسلم, left this dunya, departed to meet Allah Azza wa Jal, who came? to rule after him. al khulafa al-Rashidun, the four Khalifa Rashid. What are the names of these Khulafa? Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab, Sayyiduna Uthman ibn Affan, Sayyiduna Ali ibn Abi Talib. How long did the four of them rule for? 29 stroke 30 years. So in total, how long was the period of time of the Islamic rule, starting from the Prophet وسلم, his migration to Medina, and ending right at the end of Sayyidina Ali? 40 years. After al Khulafa of Rashidun, who came to power? Any idea? What is the Umayyad Khilafah? What is the Abbasi Khilafah? How long were they there for? Who were the Khulafa? What, was, what were the strong points and the weak points? In my mind and in your mind, in positive criticism to ourselves, and more importantly, and much less in the minds of our families and children, Terms like Al-Maghul, who are they? 
at Tatar. We know that Islam was uh, 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 not only ruling, but it flourished in Andalus, current Spain. How no fool? Who managed to do this historical achievement? The uh, Ottoman Empire. How much do we know about it? How long was it for? What were the pluses and possibly the minuses? Big question marks. So please see with me that at the end of year 40 Hijri, and now that we are in 1442, we are talking about 1,402 years. What went in, in these years? What happened? Islamic personalities. We know briefly about Salah al-Din, about Nur al-Din Zangi, about Yusuf ibn Tashafin. Who are they? When did they come? What did they achieve? With you, I aim once a month, bi ta'ala, over a period of 10 lectures between now and when we reach Ramadan, that we will be able to cover as much as we can of our Islamic history. Any nation that doesn't know its history is bound to live in a state of loss. Many of us Muslims nowadays live in a state of despair. Yes, we, we, we do not see a way out. If you put a question around, will Islam be able to rule in the 21st century? And Muslims will, will wonder whether that is, is a fantasy or, or capitalism is in charge. Capitalism is in charge of this earth. And we see the result of, of the current state where wealth is concentrated in the hands of few and the majority of not only the Muslim world, but humanity at large is in complete poverty. Humanity is crying to have Islam back. The question is, can Islam come back to rule? A second key question to many Muslims is, are we ever able to have our holy places back? Is it likely that we Muslims will have our Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa back? Many of us, by the way, do not know our fourth haram. Our first haram is, of course, Al-Haram Al-Makki, Al-Kaaba and Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. The second haram is Al-Haram Al-Madani, the, the Prophet in Al-Madina Al-Munawwara. Al-Haram Al-Thalith, the third one is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, the compound. The fourth haram is, of course, Al-Haram Al-Ibrahim in the city of Al-Khalil. That is also under occupation. These are holy places. Can we have them back? If I was to put the following question forward, will Muslims throughout the world be able to gain their dignity back, to gain their, 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 their power back? Can they be in charge of the world again? Some of you rightly may say, Brother Salim, you are, you are flying in, in fear. Before you talk about Muslims being able to, to gain power back, look at our situation now. Look at Kashmir, look at Afghanistan, look at Yemen, look at Gaza. Before Brother Salim, you talk about us being in charge. Let's first secure that our big numbers are not being killed on daily basis. Let's make sure that Muslims have food and water to drink. One report recently, United Nations reported that 
24 million children are out of the education system only in four countries. Only in four countries. Yemen, Iraq, Syria, and Gaza. Only 24 million children. I know that these questions are very big questions. I am here to confirm to you that yes, we can make it. And inshallah, between now and Ramadan, with these lectures, we will see, because brothers and sisters, التاري, and history repeats itself. This is a rule, a regulation that always applies itself. We are able. A few weeks back, I sat with a close friend, and I was talking to him and so on. The brother wasn't feeling very optimistic, and I understand. And he said, Brother Salim, the only solution to our problems is when Al-Mahdi is going to arrive. That is the only solution. Al-Mahdi will arrive, and with a miracle, our situation will change. I respectfully disagree. And I am here with full confidence to tell you that at year change is coming. There is no doubt in my mind. But what we need is to invest time. Part of this investment is that we study our history. Why should we study Islamic history? Some people may argue and say, yeah, it is a waste of time. What happened, happened. It is in the past now. Let's concentrate on I say different. I say that when we study Islamic history, we will be able to have a much more understanding of our current time. We will be able to have immunity and shield by having the encouragement from what Muslims have achieved in the past, and we will be able to plan better for our future. So please, brothers and sisters, out of tonight's lecture, if there is one point I hope that we have in mind afterwards is this. Studying history will give us the immunity, the pride, the encouragement from what, what Muslims did in the past. It will enable us to understand our waqi, our current time now better, and it will enable us to look to the future and plan more. Let's look at Quran, our constitution. One, Quran tells us that there are universal laws of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sunanullah That does not change. No matter what the time is, they remain true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Fatih, verse 43, 43, بعد الشيطان الرجيم, He says, Almighty, فَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلًا وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَحْوِيلًا But you will never find in the way, meaning universal laws, of Allah any change. And you will never find in the way, universal laws of Allah, any alteration. Let me give you a very basic example. If someone came to the masjid now, and has been coming for the last year, very good individual, and so on and so forth, and he will uh, report to me his, his one problem and say, SubhanAllah, I'm, I'm, I'm not having children. You know, I, I wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me uh, a, a son or daughter. Time goes by, and because he is constantly asking me, I take the courage to say to him, how long have you been married for? And if he says to me, Actually, I'm not married. Then I will say to him, how on earth do you expect to have a child? You may be the best of people. You may make, be making dua day and night. But, ya akhi, there is a sunnah. There is a rule of Allah Azza wa Jal. If you do not take this sunnah, you will not be able to achieve what you have in mind. Focus with me, please. 
first point in Quran as we understand why we need to read our history and understand it is Sunanullah Thabit. Two, Quran instructs us, not recommend, Quran instructs us to study history. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al A'raf in verse 176, Relate to them the stories. Command Amr. So that they may reflect. This means, this instruction of Allah Azza wa Jal means that when we study the story of Thamud and Aad and what happened to Sayyiduna Ibrahim and what happened to Sayyiduna, we don't do it for the sake of hearing the story. No. We do it so that we learn and try to reflect of things of that story on our current time and plan for the future. In another verse, Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah to Yusuf, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ And in these stories are lessons. عِبْرَةٌ Lesson. In another verse, Allah Azza wa Jal, in Surah to Yusuf, verse number three, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ We relate to you, Allah Azza wa Jal, relate to you the best of stories. These, these stories are for a reason. One third of Al-Quran almost is a collection of stories. Surely, the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, it is not for us just to, oh right, Sayyiduna Nuh lived for more than 1,000 years and he was making da'wah for 900. And it is not a story for the sake of relating the story. It is for us to reflect on. In another verse, key verse, Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Hud, verse number 120, says, وَكُلَّا نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ فِيهِ بِهِ فُؤَادِكَ And all that we relate to you, O Muhammad, and to Muslims afterwards, صلى الله عليه وسلم, of the news of the messengers is in order that we make you strong and firm your heart thereby. Meaning that when the Prophet ﷺ was under the pressure of Quraysh, when he was under the pressure of torture, when he was under the pressure of being isolated in the mountains of Mecca for three years with Muslims, a result of which was that Umm al Khadija came out of that siege ill and she died when the Prophet and his companions were under this huge pressure, this verse in Surah Hud is referring the Prophet to go back to the stories of the previous nations, of the previous Rusul, his brothers, in the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through which he is expected to draw strength. An important point, wasiyah, I leave with you, my respected brothers and sisters. Iqra'u tariq read our history. Please, read our history. I humbly learned, amongst other things, from the story of late President Begovich of Bosnia. President Begovic, we will have time, inshallah, to go to this great man, who only died in 2003. His contribution as a president, it is reported, managed the total number of Muslims who died in, in, in Bosnia throughout the world was almost 200,000. It, it is confirmed that if it wasn't for his leadership and contribution, that number would have been 300,000. He, with his political ability, leadership, maneuver, through the most difficult years, perhaps in Europe, in this, in this time, in the 90s, managed to save 100,000 lives. There wasn't something called Bosnia state. He, with the help of Allah Azza wa Jal, was the man who engineered it. The point is that when he was young, between the age of 18 and 24, we 
are told that he used to read, read and read. Arabic wasn't his first language, but he read about Islamic history. And he understood the history of Europe. If you look at his book, Al-Islam Bayn al-Sharq wal Ghurb, Islam between East and West, you will find that he is someone who understood his time very well and understood the past as well. When we see what happens in Syria, when we see what happens in, in Yemen, we go to our Quran and we find that the story of Sayyiduna Musa is repeated times and times again. What for? Because the conclusion that Pharaoh was defeated and that would be the same to the aggressors of today, no doubt. No matter what the cost is. Sunnatullah Azza wa This is Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Nuh, Sayyiduna Nuh, the story of Nuh is repeated several times. One surah in the 29th Juzah is dedicated to Sayyiduna Nuh. We learn from it that he kept making da'wah to Allah Azza wa Jal for 950 years without any malal, without any tiredness, without any uh, giving up. What about us? What happened in the, in the Arab Spring is only 19 years compared with 950 years. Sunanullah is Thabita. One of the Sunan of Allah Azza wa Jal that are firm all the time throughout history is كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةً كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 249. How many? A small group has overcome a large group by the permission of Allah. This is Sunnah. At all times, that numbers are not the only reason. In the case of Talud and Jalud, go back please to Surah Al-Baqarah. You will find that Talud, this righteous king, with very few, including Dawood, was able to defeat the huge army of the aggressor Jalud. By what reason? Bi'ithnillah. Because they took all the materialistic reasons they can, they had their faith, and they applied themselves. Allah Azza wa will take care of the rest. We are not, this, this, this is not fantasy. This isn't something that only happened then. It happened in Badr, 314 Muslims under the leadership of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were able in a historic event to defeat the, 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 the army of Quraysh in excess of 1,000 people. Quraysh heads were cr crushed. Quraysh era was almost brought to an end. وَكَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ وَكَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَالَبَتْ فِئَةً كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ This is Sunnah. It gives us courage. It gives us a source of hope. The second Sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal is this. وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخَذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَ إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ In Surah Hud, verse 102. Such is the punishment of your Lord when he seizes the population of a town while they are doing wrong. Verily, his punishment is, is painful and severe. Sometimes you wonder, Ya Akhi, complete darkness. We do not see a way forward. I say, look at 2011. An Arab leader who ruled his, this is only nine years ago, he ruled his country for almost 37 years, I stand to be corrected, ripped the country apart, took all the wealth of the country, and he oppressed people to such a degree that people were executed physically in universities. He arrived to a position whereby he thought he was the lord of Ana Maliku Muluki Ifriqiya, that no one will overcome him. How did he end up? 
How did he end up? He was killed. Sharra qitla. He was laid down with one piece of cloth covering his aura. And the people of his country were able to see him. No one was around him anymore. No one. It was decided that he will be buried and the location of the grave will not be known by anybody. هل هناك ميتة أشد من هذه الميتة؟ Is there any worse end than this? That his remaining will never be known. Allah Azza wa Jal. All what we need to do is apply ourselves and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will take care of things. As-Sunnah Al-Thalifah. At-Taghyeer. Change. Can happen. But only when people apply themselves. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ra'ad, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah will only change the condition of a nation when they change themselves. The easiest example is that if I came to you and I said, Ya Akhi, I lost my job. What do I do? I am unemployed. I am a very good person. I'm doing everything I can. Your immediate response will be, Akhi, where is your CV? What are your qualifications? What exactly can you do? In other words, you are telling me, if I do not change my employment skills, I will not be employed again. Basic fact. This apply on our condition as an entire ummah. We ought to change our position. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then take care of the rest. Another rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an istibdad, replacement. This happened in the past and it, it will happen now and it will apply itself to the future. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al Tawbah, verse number 39. These two verses in Surah Al Tawbah were asking Muslims to perform jihad fi sabilillah. The point being, if you do not apply yourself, Allah Azza wa Jal will replace you with other people. So we need to be careful. We need to be careful. Humanity, as I conclude, brothers and sisters, is in need to the treasure of Islam. The world, the, the, the earth, is crying of the oppression of the mufsideen, few people. And we need to revive our, our being and, and, and that part of that is by going to our history. Moving to our Islamic civilization. In year zero, when the Prophet وسلم, migrated to Medina, he was on his own with the Muhajiri from Mecca. In year two, as we know, was the Battle of Badr. In year three, was the battle of Uhud, when Muslims physically were not successful because of the disobedience of a small group. In year five, the battle of Al Khandaq took place. Year seven, year eight was the fundamental point where Mecca was conquered. And the era of Aslam, worshipping idols, came to an end. How many years after migrating to Medina? Only eight. Only eight. The Prophet ﷺ left Medina يعني, with, with his best companion on their own, two people. Within eight years, he was able to, to come to the Aqr Quraysh, to Mecca, and end historically the era of Al Aslam, free Al Kaaba from Al Aslam. In year 11, of course, was the most sad news when the Prophet ﷺ part of this dunya. By year 92, Muslims were in full charge of Spain. By year 95, Muslims were knocking on the doors of Europe, literally, physically, in France, 
southern France, within what? Within 95 years. The question is, can any, any other civilization achieve this? Let, 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 let's put the question to test. Let's put the question to test. So what, what was possible in the first 95 years of Al-Hijra, Al 95 years for Islam to be the dominating entity in the world, can take place again, as long as we take the means to change ourselves. I would like to stop here. Thank you for listening. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. And I very much look forward next month, inshallah, where I will take you through the life of Al Khulafa of Rashidun, whereby we can benefit and learn lessons. I leave you and I wish you all good, inshallah. I call you Kawliya Hada, wa astaghfirullah, wa salamu alaykum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.